even though it's only been out for roughly three and a half years, the Nintendo Switch might go down as my favorite game system of all time when everything is said and done. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. I'm going to go through my entire Nintendo Switch collection. The consoles, the controllers, the Joy-Cons, the special editions, the games, everything. But we all know that Nintendo is kind of going through a game drought in 2020 in terms of their first party releases. So this has kind of fallen to third party developers and indie game makers to kind of pick up the slack and release games on the console. So one of the things that I've been playing recently and I really believe in, but it's also this video's sponsor, is a game that feels like a mix of God of War meets Prince of Persia. Check it out! Raji, an ancient epic, is an action-adventure game about Indian mythology. The game draws from Hindu and Balinese cultures while showcasing beautiful, hand-painted, 3D rendered environments. When Raji's brother is kidnapped by demons, she asks the gods for their power and goes on a quest to save him. Navigate through a great war, defeat demons and large bosses, and save the human race. This is the first Indian A-class game crafted by a passionate team that's dedicated to showcasing their native culture. It includes rich storytelling elements, stunning artwork inspired by ancient Indian mythology and medieval architecture, and fluid and challenging gameplay combat. The link is in the description below the video, I highly recommend you check it out. Sticking with downloadable games that I have loaded onto my Switch, other than Raji, which I have really been enjoying, I've also been playing through Cadence of Hyrule, Tetris 99, and even Jump Rope Challenge sometimes. I'm not really sure why I'm playing that, but it's somehow addictive. All right, so let's go to the consoles to start out otherwise. The Nintendo Switch, when it launched in March 2017, I got this variation because I just went for like the normal console variation, and then I was going to build my way up through all the different variations. The one that comes with the neon blue and neon red Joy-Cons, one of my friends got, and he said that I will eventually, or I can have his box, but with What's going on in the world? I couldn't really get that from him at this point, at least not in time for this video. And then my wife and I started talking, and eventually I wanted to buy my wife a console. So which one did I decide on? I wanted to get the Pokemon themed one, so I got the Nintendo Switch Lite. This is the Zacian and Zamazenta edition, and she's really quite happy with this, but I wish it wasn't a Switch Lite. I wish it could still go on a big screen, because sometimes I would love to watch her play games. Now there are all the different color variations of the Switch Lite, and the different color variations like the Pikachu edition, the Smash Brothers edition, there's even Diablo and various other ones actually worldwide. I would love to get all the variations of the Switch consoles, but my wife and I talked and really it's just not feasible to be spending that much money every time a system drops. It's a lot. Eventually I do want to go after all of them, so let me know which ones I'm missing and what I need to get eventually, and if you guys would love to see unboxing videos for all those other special edition consoles or all those different Switch Lite color variations, if that would be something you're interested in seeing. After the systems themselves, we of course have the different accessories, so these ones I have been getting after. So first of all, let's talk about the Pro Controller, because the Pro Controller is really, really good. From my knowledge, I believe there are four different Pro Controllers that you can get in North America. I believe these are all four of them. I just got Xenoblade Chronicles 2 in a trade. I think I traded away for that Kirby Air Ride, and then I think it was something like Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2 to get the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Pro Controller. I haven't even unboxed that yet, so that's going to be coming. So first of all, the Pro Controller, just the normal one, this is the black edition of the Pro Controller. This is one of my favorite controllers ever. It is also really similar or more similar to other gaming controllers like the Xbox and like the PlayStation controllers, but it's just, it feels hefty in your hands. It works really well. I like the force, not force feedback, but the Vibration setting always feels like it's doing the right thing in the HD rumble. I really like this controller and it's very responsive and of course it has a good D-pad with the A, B, X and Y buttons as well. I really like this controller, but it's cooler if you can get one of the different color variations or special editions. So next up, I think I got the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Controller. This one is white and black. It has the Smash logo on it. I really like using this controller as well, except I'm a little worried if I use it too much, my sweat or greasy hands or something might eventually make this color fade on the controller. 
So after that, there was my wedding colors. This is the Zeno, this is sorry, Splatoon 2. We have neon green, neon pink with the Splatoon like logo kind of, not logo, but splatter all over the controller. I do have an unboxing video up of these, by the way, which you can check out in the top right hand corner as a card if you would like to check them out. This is one of my favorite controllers, especially, I mean, it was our wedding colors. My groomsmen wore green, the bridesmaids wore pink. I mean, love Splatoon as well, it's a great game. And then, of course, this one, which I need to unbox, it's almost the same color style as the Splatoon controller, but the blue is a little bit different for the Xenoblade 2. So this is still factory sealed. I'm going to feel guilty opening this up, but I definitely want to check this out and make a video for you guys soon about that. So I love those four different controllers. Let me know if there's any other pro controllers that are officially made by Nintendo that I should check out. Then, of course, we have the Joy-Cons. So the Joy-Con different color variations, there are a lot of different color variations. I got the neon red and the neon blue, as I mentioned earlier. So that one looks pretty wicked. I love Nintendo's colors. Like, look at all the colored consoles back there for the N64 and the GameCube. I love how this time around they went with neon. Then kind of matching the Splatoon controller, we got neon pink and neon green in terms of Joy-Cons. And we also have neon purple and neon orange. The child in me, when I saw this, went nuts. For some reason, I wanted to paint my room neon orange, and I'm not really sure with neon purple. I think it was my sister. One of my sisters wanted her room to be neon purple when I was a child growing up. I'm, I'm half Dutch, so maybe that's where the orange is coming out, but I really like that. And the other Joy-Cons that I have came in a Super Mario Party box. So this one is the neon green and the neon yellow. Now, there are a lot of other Joy-Cons out there that I need to pick up. There's the Mario Red ones. There's also the special ones that come with each different variation of the Switch console, which I definitely want to check out and try and add to my collection. Let me know what all the Joy-Cons are, because I'm clearly missing quite a few. I need to get after those at some point. In terms of other little accessories that I have before we get to all the games and the special editions and everything. There is the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate GameCube controller adapter. This one is different very slightly compared to the Wii U. This one has the Nintendo logo on the top, but the Wii U one says Wii U on the top. That's it. They're the exact same. They work in the exact same way. They both work on the Switch and on the Wii U for both Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and Super Smash Brothers Wii U. So just be aware of that. These are still kind of hard to find, which is insane to me. Also, a accessory is the Pokeball Plus. I got this from my best friend, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan, for giving me this, by the way. So I haven't opened this one up yet either. I did not use this. I believe this is the most handy when you're playing the Pokemon games on the go, and you can also use this as a full controller, apparently, in the game. So that's one of the other accessories that I have for the Switch. I wish I had the Pokemon editions, but we'll get there. And then lastly, for my accessories, I think this is one of the last things for the accessories, I have the Nintendo Entertainment System controllers. These work really well on the Switch when you're playing the original Nintendo Entertainment System games on the eShop or when you download the service to play the games when you pay for the internet on the Nintendo Switch. There's also these types of controllers as the Super Nintendo controller. You only get them one at a time. It's not a package of two. And every time I go to order them from the Nintendo store, I have issues. They might be in stock, but my, it never really processes. So I really want to make sure that I get those eventually, because I would love to be able to play them online with the right controller, and the fact that you can save, you can rewind, and everything like that. I have been playing those games too, so those have been really fun. So this should be all of my consoles, and I believe that's all the accessories. So let's get to the games and the special editions. For the games on the Nintendo Switch, I have roughly 40 different titles, and I'm not a collector that's ever going for a full set. I know there's gamers out there that have hundreds of games on the Nintendo Switch, but I've mostly stuck to first party titles and games that I'm excited to play, or if I found them for a really good deal. So let's go through them, mostly in alphabetical order, then I'll go through all the special editions. So first up is Animal Crossing New Horizons, of course. This game took the world by storm in 2020. It sold more copies, apparently, than the entire Metroid franchise of all time. This is a game my wife got heavily addicted to, played for hours every day. You can definitely escape yourself into this world, and it's the perfect game for 2020. Animal Crossing, New Horizons, what a game. Next up is a game that everyone's happy to see Min Min in Smash Bros. This is ARMS. 
This is a fighting game where your arms kind of launch out at your opponent. It's a really cool take basically on like boxing and almost feels like a modern day punch out in a sense, but I really hope we get a new punch out game. This game was kind of hard to find in stores for a little while, but it's being restocked. I highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of Min Min in Smash Brothers. Made by Nintendo, by the way. Another game that's at least published by Nintendo, this is Astral Chain. This is a game that I haven't really played yet, and everyone's recommending that I make the time and play this, and I definitely want to get to it. So if you can find this one, it's a lot of fun, but I barely ever see it in stores anymore. Just everyone's telling me, like, you have to play it. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. Try it out. So I definitely want to check it out. And by the way, if you have any recommendations of games that I don't have, please let me know, because I'm always looking to pick up more and enjoy them. This next one is Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. So this game is heavily inspired by Castlevania. This is a limited run release. My buddy Justin also has this game that I borrowed. Fantastic. If you love the kind of Castlevania, Metroidvania games, you're probably going to love this game too. It's called Bloodstained, Curse of the Moon. Next up, the game that I've been playing the most recently is... Well, one of the games I've been playing the most recently is Celeste. This game has blown me away. It's a very difficult platformer, kind of akin to Super Meat Boy. It's not as long as I thought, and then I really got into it, and I realized that there's, like, the B tracks and the C tracks, and this game is actually has a lot of content. So, you're trying to climb the mountain Celeste. You're also trying to overcome different anxieties with your character. I really enjoy it. The side characters, by the way, are really interesting as well. The soundtrack is great. When you die, you get right back in on the action. It's a lot of fun. Next up is Collection of Mana. I loved the Mana games, especially Secret of Mana, and my buddy Jordan and I were talking about this game, and I just really had to pick this up. So this one comes with three. Final Fantasy Adventure, which really is the first game in the franchise, I guess, for this. Secret of Mana and Trials of Mana. So you're going to get three games for the price of one. You can play Secret of Mana, I know for sure, three-player, once you unlock a few more characters in this game. So if you can find it for a good price, it's Squaresoft. I really recommend picking that one up, because you'll get a lot of fun times out of that, especially playing a, like a real-time action RPG with friends in Secret of Mana. I love the poster for that game. Next up is Dust. So this one, I'm in conversation maybe to have this one in my collection forever, but I might also get rid of this one because my friend wants it back, of course. So I really need to make the time to play this one. It was, again, highly recommended by you guys, so I tried to take up what you guys said. This is called An Elysian Tale, and it's from Limited Run, so it's harder to find if you can pick it up. I had it highly recommended to me, so keep recommending these games, guys, because I really want to make time for them. Next up, Golf Story. Again, a limited run game. This game, I can't believe this did so well. It's like a story-based game as golf. It works so well. It almost reminds me of Mario Golf, but kind of all the way to another level. It does have the cool pixelated graphics that almost look like it's on the Game Boy Advance or the Super Nintendo. It's a lot of fun, especially if you're into any sort of story game combined with golf. Next up from Super Rare Games, this is Graceful Explosion Machine. This one was sent to me uh, previously by Super Rare Games, and it has really interesting graphics where you control the Graceful Explosion Machine. You have to pilot it, basically, and you're a fighter ship, so you have to shoot down other things, and it's been a really fun, quick kind of play, so you can play it for a little while and then come back to it the next day. I've really enjoyed it as well. Next up, Still Factory Sealed, this is Kirby Star Allies. I haven't got around to playing this yet, and I really do want to, but I've really been trying to track down the Wii U version of Kirby, which is the Rainbow Curse. And I feel like I'm trying to play all the Kirby games in sequential order of release, even though Rainbow Curse kind of feels like a different type of game. So I do want to play this multiplayer, but I also want what's going on in the world to eventually be safe enough to have friends over and play this four player. But it's a Kirby game, so you get abilities, you can team up. I believe this is four players this time around, so I definitely need to get into that one, especially multiplayer. Next up, we have Knights of Pen and Paper 1 and 2. This is another super rare game. This one comes in a two pack, so you get both of the games together. So this one is kind of really interesting. You are basically kind of playing through like Dungeons and Dragons, from my understanding, while you're playing through the game. So it's a take on the roles 
it says here, so take on the roles of in-game players during the roles, taking on the roles. It's so confusing, it's like meta. Take on the roles of in-game players, taking on the roles of characters in a traditional pen and paper RPG session. It's ridiculous, it's so cool. So definitely check it out, there's at least two of those on the Nintendo Switch. I wonder if there's more of those already. Next up, all in a row, we have tons of main series Nintendo games, Luigi's Mansion 3. My wife is playing this, so I can't always play through it because she is right now. Gooigi is in this game. It's the third game in the trilogy, of course, which dates back to the Nintendo GameCube, which was a launch game on the GameCube in Luigi's Mansion. Then we had Dark Moon on the 3DS, and then I think on the 3DS we also had the first Luigi's Mansion game ported over, which you guys told me about, and now Luigi's Mansion 3. So this game needs more of my time as well. I really need to make more time for these modern games, but my wife just keeps playing it and I can't get it out of her system right now. Next up, the best Mario Kart is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This is fantastic in terms of gameplay. The controls feel perfect, music is really good. The course selection is insane with everything that they brought from the Wii U version, including all the downloadable content. There's characters in here that are no longer just from Mario, like Splatoon characters and Link and Animal Crossing. It is my favorite Mario Kart game in terms of gameplay and playing with friends online. It's really, truly outstanding. I can't believe we don't have more DLC for this, and I'm really waiting for Mario Kart 9 or like Mario Kart All-Stars where they just bring in Samus and they bring in every single different thing like Super Smash Brothers. Love Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I just can't believe the Switch doesn't have its own Mario Kart specific game. That wasn't a re-release. Next up, a game that did kind of disappoint me is Mario Tennis Aces. This game and the one on the Wii U have been really disappointing for me in this series. I miss how good the, the game was on the N64 and on the GameCube. I don't know how Nintendo kind of veered off from making such a perfect game with Camelot. And now we have this, so it's not my favorite Mario Tennis. I don't play it very much. I tried it. It's not fantastic, but it is multiplayer. You might want to check it out yourself because maybe you'll have a different opinion than me. I just, I don't know how you go so bad with a series that should be just follow what the formula did so well, add to it a little bit with more game modes, and bring it out, and it really does not work that well for me. The Wii U game was much worse, though. Next up is another port. We have New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. This one includes Nabbit as a playable character. On the Wii U, you did not have Nabbit as a playable character, you just had to catch him. And that is a really easy mode for playing through the game. Uh, from my understanding, this game has everything that the previous game had, but a little bit more because you also have playing as Toadette, you get the Super Crown, and for some reason you turn into Peach. This has everything from both New Super Mario Bros. U and New Super Mario or New Super Luigi U, which was shorter levels, they were timed, and it was just really tight, smooth gameplay. But this time around, it does look a little bit better, I think, on the Switch, from my understanding. So this is a really fun game. I just felt like the formula was getting a little bit old with all the Mario Maker games kind of taking over as well. After that, we have the Nintendo Labo games. This is the Toy-Con 01. The other Labo kits, I don't have the game with me right now. They're lent out to a friend's daughter, and she's playing through them with the Nintendo Labo kit as well. So I'm letting her kind of build some of these stuff. So these games are a lot of fun. You build all the cardboard together. More on that when I go through the special editions, but it is fun. I even built some of the stuff with a few of my adult friends because we were just hanging out. We're like, hey, let's try it. And we actually had a blast. Next up, Paper Mario The Origami King. I did play this game on the, on stream, on Twitch Live. I played through the first six hours of the game there, and I felt like I went into this game kind of trying to have an open mind, but feeling really jaded from the previous few Mario uh, Paper Mario games, because the one on the N64 and the GameCube, the best in the series, followed closely by Super Paper Mario, but then a huge drop-off for Color Splash and then Sticker Star. So this one, I wasn't sure what to expect. Nintendo had really weird things that they were saying around the game with how they can't have unique Toad characters, although in this game they have the Archaeologist, and they can't do certain things with the Paper Mario series every, anymore, and they also want to reinvent the gameplay style every single time to keep things fresh, which I don't necessarily agree with. However, this is actually a pretty good game. I don't mind collecting all the Toads. The battles can be really frustrating, but when you get it, it does feel awesome because you solved the puzzle. The big bosses are cool, 
but I wish more of them weren't like pencil crayons. I wish more of them were like the giant dragon. That was really cool in the game as well. That would be in previous games. I think that they created for origami that are evil really makes sense. And I do enjoy this game. I actually recommend that you check it out. It's more of an action adventure platformer game. It's definitely not an RPG. Next up, we've got a few of the Pokemon games. So first of all, we got the remakes. We got Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. These two are the remakes, essentially of Pokemon Red and Blue, but more like Yellow, all the way back on the Nintendo Game Boy. This time around, the best part of the game for me, yes, there's updated graphics. They don't look fantastic, but they are updated in 3D. But the fact that you can see the Pokemon in the field and run into them or run around them, you can see in the field that they're shiny if you're going shiny hunting. This game has quite a few updates that make it worth playing in 2020. So the Pokemon games, I really like those. Next up, the Pokemon. We got Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. These two games kind of are refreshing to me in the Pokemon series. I really like the open world that you can experience in this game, and the DLC is pretty darn good. So the Isle of Armor, my friend Jordan, is completely addicted to once again. I must admit, I haven't played that DLC quite yet. It's something I've been meaning to get to. But the games do feel really good. But are they in the 90s for you? For me, they're still not quite in the 90s like they used to be with some of the generations, like Pokemon Crystal, Pokemon Gold. I felt like those games deserve 90s. These ones feel like a comfortable lower A grade, so somewhere around like 80 to 85 overall. Let me know what you think of the Pokemon games. Have they got stale? Have they updated the formula enough for you? How is it going overall in the Pokemon universe? What's next after Sword and Shield in the DLC? Because I guess they're going to do remakes next. So what are the next remakes that you want to see on those. I wonder where they're going to go next. Yeah, with the remix. All right. Next up is another game of 2020 that I think should be really popular. It was released in 2019, though. It just was sold out for so long, is Ring Fit Adventure. So this one is kind of a special edition, which I'll get to, but it's a workout game where you're kind of running on the spot, doing different activities to face off against characters and bosses, and you can also do kind of like dancing to other music from other games, so like Mario music or Zelda music, where you're working out while you go. It's actually really fun. It is addictive to get into almost every single day, and I like the coaching that's kind of in the game. I'll talk more about that a little bit with the special editions. Next up is a platformer multiplayer gem called Runbo. This is the deluxe edition because it was out on the Wii U, from my understanding. Yes, it was. I'm just trying to remember. And I think it's also out... I think it's out on another system, like the 3DS or something. You can let me know if you know. So Runbo is taking a lot of different series, even like Shovel Knight characters are in this, and you put them all together, and it's platforming with colors that scroll across the screen and platforms that will change based on the colors on the screen. So it's really cool because this says that you can play 9 player, but here it only says 1 to 8, but still 8 player is insane. Getting everyone together on one couch and playing this game against each other. My buddy Kevin is probably one of the best in the world at playing Runbo. He beats me almost every single time. He's insane. Every time he plays online, I don't think I really ever see him lose. Really fun multiplayer game. You'll have a blast. Next up is Shantae with, sorry, and the Pirate's Curse. So I haven't quite played this one yet. This is on loan from my buddy Justin, so I'm borrowing this one. I just really wanted to include it in the video because so many people love the Shantae series, and the games, the original games that are on the handheld, like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, I believe, are insanely hard to find and expensive at this point. So I'm wondering, if you're a collector, if you should really try and pick this up, this is a limited run release. Kind of ridiculously cool looking. Look at this. It almost reminds me a little bit of Celeste with these two characters, but they're not... I, I need to play this one. I really need to get into that. All right. Next up is a gem from my childhood, Born Again. This is Sonic Mania Plus. This feels so similar, of course, to the original Sonic games, mainly Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. We have levels that are revamped, that are made new again, basically using the same fundamentals and components from that previous games, or from those previous games, and updating them in 2D, made by, or helped made by Christian Whitehead. They did such a good job. This has one to four players in split screen, but you honestly, if you love 2D Sonic games, and Sonic CD and games like that, you are going to love Sonic Mania. It does have a special edition, which I'll get to as well. Next up, matching that controller right there, we've got Splatoon 2. It's Nintendo's take 
on a shooting game. It's a third person kind of like paintball game where you're a kid, you're a squid, you change back and forth. Obviously, when you're in the, I guess, yeah, when you're in all the paintball goo on the ground, you can turn into a squid, and if it's your own color, you can swim really fast through it and refill your tank. The online experience here is the best, but there is a single player part of the game as well. This series is huge in Japan. I'm surprised it's not bigger over here. Splatoon 2, excellent game, one of my wife's favorites. I always use the rollers, and she uses the dualies, but she's a bit better, I think, at that game than I am. Next up is an online masterpiece in Super Mario Maker 2. I just wish the online for this was a little bit faster and worked without lag more consistently and connected me to games a little bit better. There is so many, there's an infinite number of levels that you can play in this. It is truly remarkable, especially trying to play through this with a friend. You just pass the controller, you're dying all the time. It is a blast. It feels like unlimited gameplay, and it really feels like the new Super Mario Bros. series. This is the next step in the evolution. I love the fact that not only do you get, not only do you get the graphics from Super Mario Bros. 1, 3, Super Mario World, you also get new Super Mario Bros. U and Super Mario 3D World with clear pipes, even though they're in 2D, and you have so many different amiibo you can use with this and costumes that you can put on of your characters. Wicked, wicked game. That's a must-have on the Switch for sure. Next up, what might be my favorite game of the decade, or contending for favorite game of the decade, is Super Mario Odyssey. There's a special edition for this, which I will get to as well. This is a return to 3D form for Mario. Like Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine, Nintendo even said that themselves. You have Cappy that you can throw. You have almost every single move you can do in a previous Mario game, like the triple jump, like the side jump. You can also throw your hat and jump off of it. Insane amount of gameplay where you can throw your hat and become different enemies. You can take over a dinosaur in this game for Pete's sakes. You're running through New Donk City, which looks like New York City, and there's humans in the game, which looks weird, and I thought I would hate that level, but that level ended up being one of my favorites. This game is huge, with so many moons to collect. I love Super Mario Odyssey. Like I said, one of the best games of the decade. Next up is a game that kind of takes the series back to its roots. This is Super Mario Party. I just did a pricing guide of all the Super Mario Party games, or all the Mario Party games. Again, there's a link in the corner as a card. This only has four boards though, and there hasn't been any DLC for this game, which is insane to me. I must say that Fall Guys feels like, the game Fall Guys that's really popular right now, it feels like it's a modern Mario Party game. It's what Mario Party should have been. So you'll still have fun with this. There's allies in the game that you get, that if you get a few of them, they also roll a die, and you move even farther. And then there's even more luck based in this game. The mini games are pretty fun overall. I do recommend this, but I really wish we had DLC in more than four maps. The best in its series, in my opinion, is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Everyone is back. We're still getting DLC characters. Comment below, who do you think is going to be the next DLC characters? Because Sakurai did say there's going to be a Wave 2. I'm pretty excited. That's worth a whole nother video. But honestly, the game modes for this is outstanding. They just released a smaller version of Battlefield that only has two platforms. He's constantly, Sakurai is constantly updating this, tweaking it, nerfing characters, trying to make the game overall better and more enjoyable for everyone. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the best game in the series, in my opinion. It just has everything going for it. It just gets bigger and better every time. I would love to see Sakurai take on a series other than Kid Icarus and Smash Brothers and Kirby, I would love to see him take on like Paper Mario or can you imagine if Sakurai made a Mario Party game? Like, can you imagine if Sakurai made a Mario Party game? He would throw in every character that he could and would make every game mode possible. This is Skyrim. It almost feels like this game influenced The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You are playing an RPG at its finest it's basically, well, it is an Elder, Elder Scrolls game made by Bethesda. And this is Elder Scrolls V. My one buddy, Jordan, this is one of his favorite series of all time. He got me this, and he said, you have to play it. I think it's a little bit more hardcore than Zelda in terms of the style of gameplay. 
Next up, we have a sci-fi themed action RPG. This is Transistor. So this is another game on loan from Justin. He said you definitely should check this one out as well. It is a limited run game. If you've played this, let me know your thoughts on it because I need to get into this. I need to play it. The back really doesn't show us that much about the game so far. So I really do want to get into this. It's a single player game though, made by Limited Run. I wonder how many games you have in your collection that you've never played. Because honestly, I hate saying like, oh, I haven't played this one, or this one, or this one. And there's maybe five to ten I haven't played yet still. But honestly, have you played every single game in your collection? Because I haven't quite yet. But I have these games for the rest of my life, mostly. Next up, a game from Super Rare. This is World of Goo. It's a game that was a download all the way back on the Wii, if I'm not mistaken. That was one of my favorite games on the console. So you can't stop progress. You try and basically create bridges and different puzzle solutions to try and solve these levels. And it's really fun. It's addictive. I highly recommend World of Goo if you didn't play that all the way back on the Wii. Next up, we have the Xenoblade games. This is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. This is a remake, remaster, re-release of the game that was, that was hard to find for a while, then Nintendo republished it. This is probably the best game or one of the best games from the Wii. And the Wii sold 101 million copies with over a thousand games. So that's saying something to speak that highly. It's probably at least in the top three to top five on the console. And now it's got quality of life updates and it has a special edition. You have to check this out. This is a great place to start in the series if you haven't played them before. Now the other Xenoblade games I do have, but I have them as special editions. So more on that in a bit. Now we're at Z for The Legend of Zelda, or I could have put them under L, I guess, or T, but I put, where do you put Zelda? Do you put Zelda under Z, T, L? I'm not really even sure. B for Breath of the Wild? Like T, L? I don't know. I put it under Z. This is, again, probably one of my favorite games of the decade, or it is one of my favorite games of the decade. It kind of took a little bit from all the previous Zelda games, put them all together, and released this epic. The only things that they can improve in this, or several things they can improve, are the dungeons, I thought they could have made a bit better, the boss battles, they could have made a bit better, they could have gave you full wielding or welding capabilities where you kind of make your own items and you can put them down maybe on like a stone and start making things together, kind of craft them together, sort of like Minecraft. But The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the scope and scale of this game and the puzzles and how everything feels like a puzzle now, it really does feel fantastic to play this game, and the music is just right with the ambience in it. And there's several special editions for that one. Okay, last game that's a normal release that I have is Link's Awakening. This is a remake of a game that was out all the way back on the original Game Boy, which was remade on the Game Boy Color as Link's Awakening DX. This is a shorter game. Link wakes up, that's why it's called Link's Awakening, and you play through this game that feels a lot like, this might be the special edition version, that probably is because it has this backing, but it feels a lot like a true kind of game in the style of A Link to the Past. And this one has a little bit more going for it because it kind of has a mini dungeon creator, which is a little bit better. And the graphics are in this kind of claymation childlike style that I really, really enjoy. And there is a special edition for this one too. It's a little bit hard to swallow paying full price for this game, but Nintendo did enough with this to make it worthwhile, but it is a shorter experience because it's based off of a handheld. Alright, next up, let's get to the special editions, and also let's get to the steelbooks. So, let's get to it, because there's tons. Alright, so going through the larger special editions first. First up, we have Fire Emblem three houses. If you're wondering where this was the entire time, this game is, it might be my favorite in the series, but I think I've only played three of the Fire Emblem games before. I'm really hunting for the Fire Emblem games on the Game Boy Advance. I just can't find them. There's two of them. I think the Sacred Stones is the second one and then the original. So this game, you have three different houses. You can pick your faction. It's a huge RPG that feels a lot like it was inspired by Persona and it sold so well on the Nintendo Switch. Now this special edition did come with a really, really cool steelbook that's one of my favorites. So Fire Emblem's steelbook right here. It is beautiful. Someone asked me, like, what's the whole point of a steelbook? It's like a high-end game case, and that's really it. Steelbooks used to be sold by places like Best Buy and Future Shop, but they're not as common anymore. 
This does have Fire Emblem The Three Houses on the side of this, but I wish more of the Steelbooks had the title on the side, and I wish that this special edition came with the regular case as well. But note that this is a fantastic... It's called the Seasons of Warfare edition, by the way, but this is a fantastic release. Really enjoy that. So I do have an unboxing video up of that one as well on my YouTube channel. Next up, one of the best artworks on a cover, possibly the best artwork on a Switch game. This is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This is the special edition. The artwork on this is the exact same as the Steelbook. Same thing, this one didn't come with a normal release case for the game, which is really, really weird. So you open this up, fantastic artwork in the case, but I really wish we had the game on the side. So this is a sequel to the first game, Xenoblade Chronicles. I don't think this game is quite as good as the original classic, but that might be because I played through the original first. This special edition is getting harder to find. I did do an unboxing video of it, and man, the artwork is so gorgeous on this game. There is so much going on, so it's really funny how this is about Elysium. There's a movie about Elysium, but honestly, this one is huge. It comes with the steelbook, it comes with an art book, it comes with the CD, it comes with the game. There's quite a bit going on, and these Xenoblade special editions are all almost the exact same size, which I do appreciate. These two, really similar, if not the same size. Then you have the Xenoblade Chronicles Original, that's my favorite in the series. This is the special edition, and while we have the Monado, the sword here on the cover, I wish they did a little bit more with this. They could have made this probably look a little bit better in terms of design. I wish it looked as good as the second one. So this one comes with the original case, and it also comes with a art book, but nothing else. That's it. So it was a little bit more stingy on what it was released. I do have an unboxing video up of that. Okay. Next up, let's stick to the really big, big variations of these special editions. So, here's a game called Starlink. If you guys watch Arlo, and I recommend you watch Arlo. Arlo is amazing. He makes YouTube videos as this blue puppet. It's hard to explain, but he's got such charisma as that puppet. It works really well. He bought a ton of Starlinks. And I bought this as well when it was on sale, mostly just because I want the R-Wing, and I should probably put it on display. But this game should have done a little bit better. I believe Ubisoft threw a lot into the development of this game and really thought it would sell well with all the toys that were add-ons, and it just didn't. But it is a pretty solid experience, so it's kind of sad to see that this will end. So Starlink. What drives me a little bit nuts about this is if I display it like this, you can't see what it is. And if I display it like this, you see Red Nintendo. So it kind of has to go up on the side for you to even tell what it is. Drives me a little bit nuts. I, I have no idea why, it just does. So right now, hey look, it's a red game. There you go, red game. You know exactly what it is. It's not quite the same size as these either. A little bit bigger. All right, following that, we have huge box games. This is Ring Fit Adventure. This comes with the ring that honestly is really good for working out. There is a few activities where you have to hold this ring and you kind of squish it together. You hold it above your head and squish it together. And it's honestly pretty challenging. My wife was sweating and she was going above her head the next day. She's like, my arms are actually sore. So I have been playing this. It is enjoyable. You also have a leg strap, by the way, that you put attached to your leg. And I think that I'm trying to wonder who the voice is narrating this game. Because in the game, I feel like the voice probably does some of the different anime characters, especially the female voice in this. So you get the leg strap, you get the Joy-Con, you get the game itself. You get to run on the spot and kind of do different workouts and ab routines and things like that. For what's going on in the world right now, this was a perfect game to be released this year. All right, other really big releases, of course, is the Nintendo Labo series. So this first one is called the Variety Kit. This one comes with a lot of stuff. So you kind of have these battle robots that can go against each other. You have the piano, which I haven't made yet. You also have the fishing line, the house, and also, I already made this one, you have what you can use as a driving mechanic, and you can also design your own courses in this. It's actually pretty thorough, and then drive through them. So this is the Toy-Con Kit Variety number one. After that one, we of course had variety kit number two, which was the giant mech suit, giant robot, which I don't have yet. I felt like that was Project Robot or Project Giant Robot with Miyamoto. That's what it turned into, but I don't have that one yet. I do have this. This is the Toy-Con. This is, yeah, Toy-Con 3, the vehicle kit. 
Now, most of the stuff in here is lent out to my friend, as I said, so the game is also lent out uh, to a daughter that's building it. But this has quite a few things, one thing for flying, one thing for driving, and another thing here, which kind of always confuses me, it's like this robotic hovercraft thing. So this one takes a lot longer to build. I'm finding that these are a little bit more difficult. So you can make the projects and everything, but I really like them. If you can find these on sale, I think now is the time to pick these up if they're a really good price, because prices are a little bit lower for these than when they were on original on, on religion original release they're cheaper now it's cardboard really nintendo selling us cardboard and we're buying it up then we have toy con 04 or the fourth one this is the vr kit there is a deluxe version because this one only comes with the starter set and the blaster but there's another variation to this i picked this up in anticipation of pokemon snap i hope pokemon snap uses vr it would make perfect sense it's a perfect camera game to use with this game if they don't do that it's a huge missed opportunity and you should be able to find this for 20 dollars if you hunt enough because there are deals for it especially just the starter kit for this one so those are those special editions. All right, I have a ton of other special editions to talk about also for the Switch, but I just need to reorganize this because I'm kind of running out of room. That's better. Sticking with special editions, these are the smaller special editions to go through. First up is Celeste. This is a factory sealed copy that I just got in the mail from a trade. This is a limited run game, and I think I traded away the Majora's Mask 3DS with the Skull Kid figurine and Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U with the Steelbook factory sealed, because I do believe in this game that much, and I do think there's such an audience for this game that this special edition is going to go way up over time. So I am going to keep this factory sealed, especially because I have that open copy of the game already. Celeste. Wicked platformer. Very, very difficult, though. All right, next up is a game that I haven't even opened yet. This is Fire Emblem Warriors. This is the special edition. I got this at launch. It does come with the game. It also comes with a card set, a poster, and multiple CD soundtracks, which is really, really cool. This is like Dynasty Warriors, but with Fire Emblem characters. There's also Hyrule Warriors that's out on the Switch, which is a real release, I guess, of the Wii U game. I'm not the biggest fan of this style of gameplay. That's why I didn't open this up originally. Originally, and now that it's harder to find this, I feel really bad opening this up. So I might eventually find a copy of the game that's already open so I can enjoy it properly. Alright, after that, we've got the Pokemon games. So the Pokemon games, there's several different variations of the special edition. This one is the double pack, which includes a steel book and also download codes for Dynamax crystals. But there's a different variation of it that doesn't have the steel book. So this is the one that I got originally, and then I found the double pack since. They're very similar, but one's obviously a little bit thicker in terms of the box because it has to include the steel book. Now the steel book looks like this. So this is pretty cool. You got both characters. And you also open this up and you have the world map of the Galar region, Galar region, Galar, Galar, Galar. I always say it wrong. Everyone yell at me because I'm definitely saying it wrong. I just like how this has two slots for both of the games. I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to display the Steelbook variation. That's the one I would recommend you get. Are there any other variations that come with maybe figurines or things like that? Because that would be pretty cool. But Zacian and Zamazenta, they look so cool, especially on the Steelbook. Next up is the special edition of Sonic Mania. This is the plus edition, as some of the cardboard just went falling. The main thing that this has is the art of Sonic Mania inside, and it also has, of course, the physical copy of the game, which I already showed off. So this is a really cool variation to try and get if you don't have it, and if you're a fan of the Sonic series. This one's probably not going to stand up, so I'm just going to put Sonic Mania maybe just over here for now. All right, I do want to get to a few games that are all really similar with release style. So this is Splatoon 2 that comes with a bonus strategy guide. Sometimes these are called like the Traveler Pack or the Starter Pack. These are, from my understanding, sold out of stores in North America. They're a little bit harder to get. This one is not in mint condition, so I am happy to have this at all in my collection. And it comes with the game, of course, and then it also comes with a book, like a strategy guide for it almost like a giant instruction manual that everyone's screaming for. So I thought this was a really cool variation to get in 2020. Also released in that style, we have one for Super Mario Odyssey. This one has the Traveler's Guide. 
So it's really weird that there's not one generic name for these, like Starter Pack. They're a little bit harder to search for on eBay if you're trying to find them. And this one does have a really thorough guide. Kind of like in the game where you hit Start and you go to like maybe the Bubble Bean Kingdom. Bubble Bean? Bubble Bla I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, or at least New Donk City. And there's a little pamphlet with all the characters and talking about the population and things to do. So this is a much more thorough guide for something like that. I really recommend you try and pick up these starter packs. I'm not sure if these will stay standing either. So we got Splatoon one. We got, let me just lean them up. We got Splatoon, we got Super Mario Odyssey, and of course there's one more of these. So the third one that released is The Legend of Zelda. This one is called the Explorer's Guide Plus Mapper and Map. So the Explorer's Edition, it also comes with a the map right here, of course, and then this book. And the book is actually really interesting, but it's not as good as the other massive variations of the special editions that are out for Breath of the Wild. I think there's also two other ones that I need to get to. So these ones are a little bit harder to find, I think, in stores right now, but I do recommend you try and pick these up. One of them that I actually got factory sealed as well is Super Mario Odyssey, so I have that one still sealed. I'm probably going to sit on this one for a few years and eventually trade it away, but it's cool to have that one still factory sealed. I try not to get too many factory sealed games. Alright, um, I do maybe... No, let's just keep going, kind of. I ran out of alphabetical order because these three are kind of going together. Super Mario Party, I already mentioned this one, so I'm just going to briefly go through this, of course. You get the two Joy-Cons in this set. It is harder to find. Prices are going up for this. I really wish Nintendo would re-release something like that because I think it would be worth it. Worth it to all the fans, at least, to get something like that in. Alright, and then after we have Super Mario Party, we also have other larger variations so we have something like Super Smash Brothers that comes with the controller so the controller that you see right here for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate you get the controller and you also get a steelbook inside so the steelbook is really plain I was very disappointed in this steelbook so here it is this is the steelbook it's black on the front with the logo in flames the back is black there's no name of the game on the side. You open this up and you have Battlefield, which is kind of cool, the three platform version or variation, but no instruction manual or anything like that. It's really cool to get this variation of the special edition, especially for that pro controller, but this steelbook is the worst steelbook I think I've ever got. I, I don't understand why there's no name on the side and I really wish that this came with the regular release of the game as a normal copy, kind of like all the other ones that I have. Just the re original case, that would have been cooler. Still going, few more left. All right, next up is Yuka Laylee from Limited Run Games. This is factory sealed and I don't want to open this, but I have experienced this game a little bit. There are five monstrous worlds. As you do more and more in the world, then you have a section of the world open up. So it is made by the creators of Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, which is really nice to see, but it doesn't quite reach my expectations that I had from Banjo-Kazooie. It is a fun experience if you like platformers like kind of like Super Mario Odyssey or Super Lucky's Tale. This one is worth checking out if you haven't tried it already. There is Ukulele in the Impossible Layer, but that is a 2D experience, so just be aware about that. This one is the harder to find N64 variation, which I think is really cool. That's why I had to I had to get it. My local game store had it and I went, "Yup. I think I definitely need to buy that one." Okay, another special edition is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. By the way, I have unboxings for almost all of these, including this one up on my YouTube channel. This one comes with the game, it also comes with the art book, and this made the game a little bit more expensive, but totally worth it if you're already spending that much money on the game. Again, great graphics, and the best part about this is the fact that you can play through the game again, but I really like how you can do a little bit of dungeon planning, but I really would like a Super Mario Maker designed kind of game in the style of Legend of Zelda, where you have way more control than you get out of this one, but great special edition if you can get your hands on it, if you can find it. I'm almost done, but not quite there. There is another special edition, which is monstrous. It is huge. I already showed it off a little bit in the video. This is the Legend of Zelda. Breath of the Wild Master Edition. When I bought this, it was the most expensive variation of a game at $200. I think it was 160 American, 150 American. The most expensive thing I ever bought. It has a soundtrack. It has a statue of the Master Sword. It has the game. It has a map. 
It has an insane amount of stuff, but the best thing about it, obviously, is that statue. So this is selling, I think, for over $350 and up now. And there's another variation of the Breath of the Wild, which I'm trying to get, but I haven't found it yet locally, which I do need to pick up. Huge, wicked, fantastic. It's just monstrous. If I put it up here, you're probably just going to see, like, the gold right there, but you'll, you'll know. That's Breath of the Wild. So this is everything for my Switch collection. I'm looking at this, and even though other collectors have way more than this, they have a lot more games, maybe, or they have all the different variations of the console itself, which I don't have quite yet, because they're so expensive to try and buy outright. I would love to keep collecting for the Switch for years to come, so I guess I at least have all of that to look forward to. I can keep collecting for the Switch for a really long time because there are so many different variations of the system and the Joy-Cons that I want to go after, and I'm sure there's a lot of games that I still need to get. So let me know what I'm missing, let me know what games maybe I should trade out and maybe get something better or get something different, and let me know of anything that you suggest, especially as a downloadable game that I should check out. Thank you so much if you watched all the way to the end for this. My Switch collection for August 2020. I hope next year I have even more to talk about, but I really hope I take some time to enjoy some of these games and really get to my game catalog. Feel free to fill that like bucket by clicking the button below, subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you haven't subscribed. I release videos on Wednesdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay safe.